Now I want to talk a little bit about a concept, Model View Controller. It's not super essential to understanding how everything works in uh, web servers, but it's a great set of terminology that uh, we use among web developers. And I think as you move into a, your role as a web developer, you ought to understand this. So this is a picture of the request response cycle. At the bottom we have the browser, and at the top we have a web server talking on port 80. The user clicks on a page, clicks on a link, the browser intercepts that link, opens a connection up to the web server, sends a GET request, the web server does its work, and returns a web page. And so that's sort of the basic request response cycle. And now we're going to, as in much of this class, really expand what we're going to do when we're in that web server. So that's where we're going to take a look at this. So basically Model View Controller is really a set of terms that allow us to say this aspect, this part of the work that's going to be done in the web server, it's either the model, it's the view, or the controller. And so it's, 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 a, it's a, the most value that it has to say, oh, that, that part right there, that's controller. So model view controller is independent of the programming language that you use, independent of the operating system that you use. It's pretty universal across as a concept, as an architecture, as a way of talking about web servers. So the three parts of it, it'd be probably better to call it controller view model or model controller view model or something like that. But model view controller rolls off our tongue better. So the definition in my mind of these terms is the controller is this sort of abstract idea of what happens next, what is the sequence of events that happen, and then where do we start from, what do we do when we get a re uh, request, and then afterwards where do we go at the end of that. The view is all the stuff we see. It usually is at the end of the request response cycle. We produce a view and we return the view back. And one of the things that the request response cycle often does is either interacts by storing data in a database, like an insert, or it edits something and puts it in a database, or it just reads stuff from the database and shows it to us in the, the view. And so that's called the model. The database itself and sort of the notion that we have persistent storage inside the application, that's what we call the model. The view is what we see, and the controller is kind of the glue that puts it all together. So the controller orchestrates all this stuff. And so it's, sometimes you don't say that's the controller, but the controller is like several places and the actual shape of your application. So when we re receive a request, we have a number of tasks that we often have to do for each request. Sometimes if it's like a form that's been sent to us, we have some data that we have to receive, validate, and then process, and then store it in a database maybe. And so that's often thought of as the model work. Then we, once we've done that, we make a decision, like I, I, I stored this, where do we want to send the user? What do we want to show next? What page to show next? Maybe we show them you know, a thank you page, or maybe we send them back to the top page of the application. And so once we know what page we're going to send back to them, then that page has some data that we might have to pull from the database. And so we retrieve that using the model, and then we produce, perhaps using a template, some HTML response and then put it back. So these are the four typical steps that we break down to say, in comes an HTTP request. First thing we do is if it has data that we're supposed to do something with, we handle it, maybe store that data in a database. Then we talk to the database and retrieve more data to produce the next output that we're gonna make. And then we produce the HTML or the other form of output and we send it back to the browser. And so if we take a look at this in our Django application, the Django application is, is pretty much a model view controller uh, application in that you know, the, the routing is very much the controller. It is that which we, it's like, here comes a URL, it's a request for something, where do we go? And so when you write urls.py, you're informing the controller. So the urls.py, I would say, is part of the controller action, um, the controller activity. Um, the views is named the view. So the view is, is a little bit controller in that sometimes the view is storing some data in the database. Sometimes that's the job of the view. Here comes some data before the view produces the next output. It actually has to store the, the, what came in on this request. 
and then the view will do some controller activity, like it might decide, you know, I don't want you, I, this is the wrong page now that we've processed your data, I'm just going to send you over to some other page. That's kind of a controller activity. So it might say, I'll store the data. It might, let's see here, can I, yeah. So it might say, you know, here I go, I'm going to store some data, and then I'm actually just going to send you to a different place. I'm not even going to give you an HTML. And we'll talk about that redirect. That's called a redirect in a bit. Sometimes there is no data, and so sometimes you get some data, you route it to the right view, and maybe some data has to be retrieved from the database, merged together, and result is processed. So when we think of views.py, that is to me both the controller and the view production. So sometimes it's making decisions about where to go next. Sometimes it's just handling incoming data or, or sending data out. And similarly, the, the, the models is taken from model view controller because the models.py is where we basically do all the work to talk to the database, whether it is storing stuff in the database or retrieving stuff in the database. We use the Django model capability to implement the concept in model view controller of models. So just a quick summary. I like to think of urls.py and some of the views.py is the controller. The models, of course, is all the things that talk to the database. And then the views are like the second half of views.py. So they produce using templates and forms.py and et cetera, et cetera, to produce the output and send it out. And so that's how I map the model view controller onto the Django architecture. And again, Django architecture was probably inspired by the model view controller, and that's why it takes some of its names of some of its capabilities from the model view controller concept.